another board member? Ruth, do you want to talk? Do you want to? Do you want to go next? Okay. Let's see if I can. Let's see how this works. Okay, go ahead. Um, so it's one of the three board members who helped hire Carol Smith back in 2007. Um, I take my share of accountability for not insisting that she take regular regular um, salary increases over the last seven years. And um, had the board done so, we would not be in the position of needing to catch up um, with, this, with this large uh, kind of one-time uh, increase. But um, we do need to recognize the outstanding performance of Superintendent Smith, not just her um, universally acknowledged wonderful personal qualities, but her professional accomplishments and her truly outstanding leadership and performance for this district over the past seven years. Um, as Sam reviewed, including the increase in our graduation rate and the, the momentum that we're seeing in that direction, our nationally recognized equity policy, <coughs> her careful stewardship of public dollars during state budget cuts over the last several years, passage of the capital bond and local option levy, and on and on. Um, and we do need to be in the market range for a district of our size. Uh, like it or not, urban school superintendents are in a highly competitive, uh, extremely high stakes, high pressure, and therefore highly compensated position. That's just the reality we live in in, in our world. Um, so we uh, we need to we need to be compensate her according to her performance and in line with similar districts, similar school districts. And really, for me, most importantly, we, we, have, we must not underestimate the huge, huge value to our district and really the entire community to have the long-term leadership uh, of Carol's caliber. In other words, for the seven years, every additional year um, really adds exponentially when you don't have the churn and the chaos that comes with constant superintendent mm -hmm. turnover. We've been very, very fortunate here in Portland to have her long-term steady leadership, and that is of incalculable value. So I appreciate um, Coach Eric Knowles' um, long work and researching and negotiating and working through this to come to this final package. Obviously, I deeply appreciate Carol's leadership and hope she'll be with the district for many years to come, and I'm supporting the resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Director Regan. So when Superintendent Carol Smith was first hired seven years ago, she was given a salary that was less than the former superintendent and less than market comparables because she lacked two key ingredients, experience as a superintendent and experience running a large and complex urban school district. Seven years later, the superintendent resume now includes these key ingredients, yet her salary is essentially the same. So an adjustment is warranted. As we started this process, I had two priorities. The first was to get our superintendent's salary to a point that is market competitive. And the second was to ensure that the superintendent's contract remains simple and transparent. No hidden payouts, no add-ons. So how you define market competition is important. Comparisons to Seattle and California are interesting, but to me not necessarily appropriate, as Portland is a very different market. Comparing Portland to Beaverton or Salem is not apples to apples either. We are the only urban school district in the state. Our student demographics are challenging in unique ways. Our cost of living is higher. <coughs> we have a strong and engaged business community and unique partnership opportunities, and we are the media hub for the state. So for market comparables, I looked at several different factors. First, what do superintendents in comparably sized urban districts make, and for districts with uh, 30 to 60,000 students, the range is anywhere between 224,000 and 300,000. Second, what do urban superintendents with five <coughs> or more years experience make? The average is 247. Male superintendents, of course, make more. Female superintendents make less. That's a sad statement, but it is the reality. So male superintendents with five years experience on average make 257. Female superintendents on average make 238. Third, I looked at the raises that Portland Public School teachers have gotten during the same year, the seven year time frame. That analysis is interesting. If Superintendent Smith had made the raises or cost of living increases that teachers got without seniority steps, her salary would be about 210,000. 
if she had received the same raises as teachers get during the first 13 years of service, meaning cost of living increase plus steps, her salary would be closer to 250000 So finally, if Superintendent Smith had received a raise of 3.5% for each of the past seven years, her salary would be about 245000 So looking at all of these factors, it's reasonable that the superintendent's salary should be in the mid-240s somewhere, um, which is a significant increase, and I acknowledge that. Um, but it's likely where we would need to be if we were out in the market today recruiting for a new superintendent. So a clean and transparent contract is actually a higher priority for me than the raise itself. When I was elected to the Portland School Board in 2003, we made several intentional changes to our administrative contracts. The board before us had done two six-figure contract buyouts, one for a former superintendent and one for an assistant superintendent. We had to do a third. The community was outraged and we were mortified. So we changed our policies and practices to ensure this didn't happen again. And in fact, the legislature responding to this passed a bill to ensure the <coughs> districts were not allowed to pay employees for time they don't actually work. So since that time, we have no golden parachutes or bonuses or other extras in our administrative contracts, no housing allowances, no cars. We have no special health insurance payouts. And in fact, our senior administrators receive the exact same health insurance as all of our other administrators. So as we started this discussion, I wanted to be sure that we didn't lock future school boards into overly generous contract terms or raises they would have to pay out. I specifically wanted to be sure we were never again in a situation where we might have to do a six-figure contract buyout. Our cur current superintendent contract today includes salary and an annuity. Otherwise, it is a clean and transparent contract. I'm pleased that after prolonged negotiations, the contract we're voting on today also <coughs> includes salary and annuity with no extras hidden within. If we hadn't gotten there, my colleagues knew that I would be a no vote. And while the salary we're offering is higher than I'd like, it's in the ballpark of where I believe we need to be to be market competitive. So my vote today is based on where we should be in the market and where we would need to be if we were launching a superintendent search tomorrow. But I would like to take the opportunity to comment a little bit on the superintendent's performance. During the superintendent's seven years, we have dealt with significant annual budget cuts that have hampered our ability to invest fully where we need to invest. Yet even in these times, we have significantly increased language immersion opportunities Every Portland Public School now has counseling support for students. We have summer intervention sessions targeted to students needing extra support or those in key transitional periods. We started a successful middle college program at Jefferson High School. We're finalizing turf fields at all of our high schools. We rebuilt Marysville School after a tragic fire. We converted all of our furnaces to natural gas, saving millions of dollars in utilities and we've significantly increased professional development around cultural competency. In addition, we successfully passed a local teacher levy in 2011 with our, uh, 2011 with our current levy paying for about 600 teaching positions. We passed a nearly $500 million facilities bond in 2012, allowing us to start the much needed renovation of our schools, starting with three high schools plus seismic roof accessibility and science lab upgrades. And we settled a highly contentious teacher contract in a way that supports both students and staff, adding 180 teachers and lowering our student-teacher ratio, adding two days to our school calendar and allowing us, at long last, to get out early in the market to hire the best and the brightest new teacher talent each year. In a previous contract negotiation, we fully revised our teacher evaluation process. Most importantly, we're seeing a steady increase in our graduation rate up 14 points in the last four years. So is there more to do? Absolutely. Our graduation rate is still a hair lower than the state average and way lower than what any of us would view as, as acceptable. We're still working to provide a full class schedule and to meet minimum instructional hours for our high school students. Our administrative support for school principals must be beefed up. We're in the process of improving our parent complaint process, which has left <coughs> too many caring parents in bureaucratic limbo. We continue to work on strategies to address our unacceptable achievement gap between white students 
in students of color, although we are making progress. We need to continue to strengthen our partnerships with labor and trades, especially to support career technical education opportunities for our students. And our relationship with the Portland Association of Teachers must evolve into a healthier partnership generally. So my vote today should not be interpreted as a statement that all is well. It is a statement, however, that says we're making steady progress, we should be paying our superintendent a competitive salary, and we have urgent work to do to better support our students, staff, and families. I'll be a yes vote. Thank you. Um, I only have a few comments, uh, but I, I think generally uh, hiring and retaining a superintendent is uh, probably one of the most challenging and also most public uh, things that a, and responsibilities that a board has. Uh, I think uh, the Oregon Educational Investment Board, for example, learned their lesson when they hired Rudy Crew um, is to see how difficult it is to, to bring in a quality uh, education leader. Um, I think uh, you have an opportunity to invest in rhetoric or you have an opportunity to invest in stability. And uh, I think the stability that Superintendent Smith has offered this district over a number of years uh, is too important of a commodity <coughs> for us to sacrifice. And, uh, and I will be a yes vote for this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. So I don't have anything eloquent prepared. Um, but just a couple of thoughts so people understand my thought process going through this. One, um, if the superintendent was underperforming, um, then I wouldn't be considering this, but she's um, been performing it. And as people have pointed out, um, we have been making steady, consistent growth, which is actually better um, than spiked and dropping, dropping growth because um, as happens in testing, big spikes, large spikes usually indicate some anomaly, and that's not what we've been doing. We've been growing steadily. Um, I appreciate the, the public comment about be careful about markets, right, because people shouldn't be in this business for, for money. Um, as a nonprofit employee, I just want to let you know that our, um, our industry, our sector also goes through market rate adjustments, knowing that nobody is in nonprofit work for, or few people are in nonprofit work. I'll move it over there. Sorry, phone technicality. Um, <coughs> market rate adjustment is just looking at other people doing the work and seeing whether or not you're compensated um, adequately or similarly. Um, and unlike Director Curler's experience where it's a spiral up, I've been part of many adjustments where actually things have gone down depending on what the market is at a, at a time. And so um, I think it's reasonable for any industry, any business, any organization that's looking at keeping and and um, as I think about the priorities that I've seen come from this board, um, when we were in contract negotiations with all of our partners, our consistent philosophy was um, we want to hire great people, we want to keep good people, and we want to be able to compensate them to keep them around, and we want parity because there isn't the custodian is not necessarily more important than the teacher, is not necessarily more important than the superintendent. All of these people have functions and they affect our kids and how we move and they're all important so it's important that we do consider it in the context of our system and you've seen graphics that while if you look at the actual increase in a one time it is an extraordinary amount yes but it is because it has been artificially depressed partly because of state funding over the past seven years and again to Superintendent Smith's um, credit she has not been willing to take that, understanding the sacrifices that everybody has been making. At the same time, what that does is with superintendent's salary pegged at a certain amount, <coughs> it affects the rest of the organization, meaning we cannot raise somebody below her to a competitive level or the person below them. At some point, they wind up um, bumping into each other and we begin losing people to either states or other districts because we cannot hire the type of quality people that we want. So if I think of various positions in our organization, whether it's our executive level, they're not all education positions. Some of them are transferable, financial people, human relations people, whatever the case may be. Folks have the choice of going to city, 
have the choice to going to county, have the choice to going to large private organizations. Now we can sit as a philosophy and say, well, if that's what they're here for, then we don't want them. The reality is people doing the same exact job will look at what their options are. And just like all of us that are trying to make ends meet and trying to figure out how to be the best for our family, they may or will make other choices. So it's important that we be aware of it, not that we chase it, but that we be aware of it. So I'll be voting yes for this, um, understanding that for me, this large of an increase is a one-time thing. And I will be, um, even in next years, depending on what the budget is, advocating for the superintendent to continue to take those regular step increases, whether it's 2.3, whatever it is, so that in another five years, we don't find ourselves having to do this large of an adjustment. Most of what I thought about while I was trying to come to this decision was included in the PowerPoint that we had earlier. Um, but I do want to say uh, that I value very much the work that Superintendent Smith has done for us over the past seven years. Um, and particularly the things that we can see so easily, the increase in our graduation rate, the narrowing of our achievement gap, passing of a bomb, passing of a levy, putting more money into schools, putting more teachers into schools. Um, our equity policy, these are all things that, that make Portland Public Schools the great district that it is. Um, and I think that it's her longevity and her willingness to stick with it through really tough times. There have been really tough budget times in, in uh, Oregon. Her longevity and her laser-like focus on uh, making sure that our students achieve, uh, all students achieve, not, not just those who always will, but all students achieve. Um, to me has been uh, a tremendous benefit for this district and I really do appreciate. And I, I also wanna <coughs> comment briefly on the fact that we do want to hire and retain uh, the best people we possibly can. I think uh, Greg said it very well um, because the upheaval that's caused by people coming and going like uh, Portland Public Schools suffered through for many, many years um, those of you in the audience probably remember every two years a new superintendent uh, is, is very difficult and is why the, one of the reasons why the district was in the state that it was in when Carol came on board. Um, and so I, I want to thank her again for her longevity and um, for her laser-like focus on making sure all of our students achieve. And I'm also a yes vote. All those in favor, um, Ms. Houston, will you call the roll? Yes. Director Atkins? Director Bellotta? Yes. Director Regan? Yes. Director Buell? No. Director Morton? Yes. Director Crow? No. And Chair Knowles? Yes. It's okay, five. resolution 4949 is approved by a vote of? Five to two. Five to two. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.